Hi, and welcome to the Fountain of Israel Bible Studies program. And as you saw at the opening credits, this is another one of God's holy days. This one in particular is the Feast of Tabernacle. But as always, praise the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and peace to everyone joining us on this program. And before we get started, I always encourage everyone to have pen, paper, and their Bible to follow along with us to show, so you can see exactly what we are reading right from your Bible. Again, today's lesson is the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, I know a lot of people, you know, who call themselves Christians, they wonder, well, why are we even observing these holy days? That's for the Jews. You know, that's not for us. Well, the, the news of that is that the New Testament believers still kept the holy days. And I could read that throughout the Bible. But we're going to talk about one particular holy day, which is the Feast of Tabernacles. Brothers and sisters, the beauty of observing and understanding God's holy days is understanding and being a part of His holy plan. That's what it's called. Just a couple weeks ago, we were observing the Feast of Trumpets, where we learned that there are seven trumpets, where we know that the Lord is returning at the last trump, and it, is, it was defined as seven trumpets. So we understand these type of things, and all this comes from the plan of God. All this understanding comes from observing His holy days. We have the Day of Atonement. We know that is the day that His redemption comes. That is the day of the atoning sacrifice. Okay, unlike the Passover. The Passover is when He had died and paid the price for our sins, that we may be forgiven. Okay, but that is a continued work. Now, like the Feast of Tabernacles, it's a little bit like the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, meaning that the Passover kicked off the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So there was the Passover, and then the very next day is the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and you have the Feast of Unleavened Bread for seven days. This particular holy day is the opposite. We start with the seven days of the Feast of Tabernacles, and then we have the eighth day. So like the Passover is at the beginning of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, but it's two different holy days. It just kicks off the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The eighth day is at the end of this one. So the next seven days is the Feast of Tabernacles. And then after that is the eighth day, the last great day. But we're going to pay particular attention to the Feast of Tabernacles, which is the Feast of End Gathering. See, the meaning of that, this is when the Lord gathered His people, both Israel and spiritual Israel, together in that day. Who will have part in His millennial reign? Who will have part in that tabernacle? And I'll read to you that everyone from every nation will keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So if they're going to keep it in that day when He's ruling on earth, then it's a good idea to keep it now so you have an understanding of what God is doing. A lot of people, you know, we go to the Sunday church and they say, well, the Lord is doing a work. And then they're vague. Or they make something up. The truth is the Lord is doing a work. But He's doing His work. He is orchestrating and He is conducting His plan. And we have two choices. We can be on the positive side of the plan, or we can be on the negative side of the plan. But the choice is up to you. So we're going to pay particular attention to the Feast of Tabernacles today, and we'll learn a few things on the way. But this is the Feast of Tabernacles, the end gathering, end gathering, and we will pick this up in Leviticus 23 to see where it all began. Leviticus 23, let's pick it up in verse 1 and learn a few things. Verse 1 says says this, Leviticus 23 and verse 1, let the Bible speak. And the Lord spake unto Moses, uh -huh. saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, uh -huh. and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, Concerning the feast of the Lord, go ahead, Which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, mm -hmm. even these are my feasts. Even these are the feasts of the Jews. What did it say? My feast. Okay, go ahead, verse 4. Skip to verse 4. These are the feasts of the Lord. These are the feasts of Moses. Of the Lord. Go ahead. Even holy convocation. Mm -hmm. 
which ye shall proclaim in their season. In their season. So these are the annual feasts. But we're going to skip down to verse 33 because before that, between 4 and 33, he's speaking of all his feasts. But we're going to go to the one that we're dealing with today. Verse 33, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, mm -hmm. saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, mm -hmm. saying, the fifteenth day of the seventh month Go ahead. shall be the Feast of Tabernacles. It's the Feast of Tabernacles. Go ahead. For seven days unto the Lord. So we have to have a feast for seven days. Seven days you have a feast. And that word, it does mean a feast. You're supposed to have a holy gathering. All the believers gather together and have a feast unto the Lord. That's exactly what it means. Now, a couple of other, other things on a side note is that these feasts are called by a number of different names. Okay, these are annual Sabbaths. These are annual Sabbaths. These are holy days. These are feasts of the Lord. These are festivals of the Lord. All one and the same, but they have different names. But I don't want that to trip you up. Okay, uh, shall be a feast of tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. Continue. On the first day shall be a holy convocation. Okay. You shall do no servile work therein. You shouldn't do any work for money, your normal job. Go ahead. Seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. On the eighth day mm -hmm. shall be a holy convocation unto you. The eighth day, that's something different, and we'll deal with that on our next lesson, but go ahead. And you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. And you don't do that because Jesus is that offering now. So we don't do that now because Jesus is that sacrifice. He is that offering. Go ahead. It is a solemn assembly. Mm -hmm. And you shall do no servile work therein. You shall do no work for money. Let's go to Deuteronomy 16. We want to look at the, uh, a couple of feasts. Now there are some feasts where you do eat, you feast, you have a smorgasbord of food. Okay, and then there's some where you don't. You know, on the Passover, you don't do that. You have the wine and you have the bread, but there's no big feast. On the Day of Atonement, you have no food, no water, no, no anything. But there are three feasts where you actually have a lot of food in abundance. Deuteronomy 16 and 16, let's take a look at it. We're going to look at it in two, two places. Deuteronomy 16 and 16, go ahead and read Three times in a year mm -hmm. shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God mm -hmm. in the place which he shall choose. Mm -hmm. In the Feast of Unleavened Bread. That's the first feast. Go ahead. And in the Feast of Weeks. That's Pentecost. Go ahead. And in the Feast of Tabernacles. Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about right now. Go ahead. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Go ahead. Verse 17. Every man shall give as he is able. That's right. According to the blessing of the Lord thy God which he has given thee. Okay, we're going to go to Exodus 23. So everyone, three times a year, we need to get together as a, con as a congregation, as a body of believers, and have these feasts three times a year. Okay, it's supposed to be a great feast unto the Lord. Okay, he has us, he has us, ordered us to do this. This is one of his ceremonial laws here. Let's go to Exodus 23. And we're going to look at it one more time. Let's go to Exodus 23 and 14. Let's look at it one more time. Exodus 23 and 14. Let the Bible speak. Go ahead. Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me uh -huh. in the year. Three times you shall keep a feast unto me in the year. Verse 15. Go ahead. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days. Okay. As I commanded thee. That's a commandment, not a suggestion. Go ahead. In the time appointed of, of the month of Eve. Mm -hmm. For in it thou camest out from Egypt. Okay. And none shall appear before me empty. So this is one of those things where you have to bring your tithe. You have to bring your tithe, and I'm not talking about just, you know, uh, money, but money is one of them, one of them. But this is one where we are commanded, okay? You bring your food, you bring your tithe, you bring it in so this feast can be put on. Whatever you have to contribute to the feast, that's what you're supposed to do. Let's go ahead, verse 16. And the feast of harvest. Uh-huh. The first fruits of thy labors. Uh-huh. Which thou hast sown in the field. Mm-hmm. And the Feast of Ingathering. So right there we saw two feasts. We saw the Feast of Pentecost, or the Feast of Weeks. It's called the Feast of Harvest, or the Feast of First Fruit. And then we also see the Feast of Ingathering. This is, this is talking about when the Lord said he's going to gather all his people. 
when he gathers all of us from the four winds, when he gathers Israel and spiritual Israel from the four winds and bring them in. We're talking about a time when he separates the wheat from the tares. This is the end gathering. Basically, who will be his and who will be cast out? This is what we're talking about here. Continue and a feast uh, has sown in a field and a feast of end gathering. Go ahead. Which is in the end of the year. Mm -hmm. When thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field. When he has gathered the labors out of the field. So he's talking about all over the earth. When he gathers everyone in. Those who are his at his coming. He's going to gather them and then you will dwell with him. This is what this is about. Gathering his people unto him. To dwell with him. Let's go to Leviticus 25. Because there's a certain year he's going to do it too. And it's going to be the year of his return. And this symbolizes his year, the year of his return. When we need to, we need to understand this. This is all here for our understanding and our consumption. Leviticus 25, let's pick it up at verse 1. Let the Bible speak. And the Lord spake unto Moses in Mount Sinai, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, mm -hmm. and say unto them, mm -hmm. When ye come into the land which I give you, mm -hmm. Then shall the land keep a Sabbath unto the Lord. Okay, so he even wants the land to rest. It means no farming and planting and things like that. It's for a reason. The Lord put that for a reason. He made the earth so he knows exactly how it works. Go ahead. Six years thou shalt sow thy field. Mm -hmm. And six years thou shalt prune thy vineyard. Uh -huh. And gather in the fruit thereof. Okay, verse 4. But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land. Mm -hmm. A Sabbath for the Lord. The Lord wants us to do that. Okay. Now I know all of us are um, are not farmers today, but there was a time when we were an agrarian society, a society of farmers, and we lived off the land. And there are some people out there that still do that. But there's a reason. The Lord has His reasons. Let's go to verse eight. Drop down to verse eight. And thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee, mm -hmm. seven times seven years. Mm -hmm. And the space of the seven Sabbaths of years mm -hmm. shall be unto thee forty and nine years. Forty and nine, did you add one, that's fifty. It's the same as Pentecost. Penta means fifty. Okay, so we're talking about this is a year of freedom. But we're going to let we're gonna let the Bible tell us this. Go to verse 9. Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the jubil to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. That's the, that's the last trumpet, but go ahead. In the day of atonement. On the day of atonement. Go ahead. Shall you make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. Okay, this is, this is, they're talking about jubilee. We're talking about liberty. Okay, we're talking about when everything, basically man will not be ruling anymore. So none of us will be under man's flesh and blood rule. Okay, all the corruption and all the war, all, all that will be over. Okay, after, after the Lord set it straight, it will be over. Okay, but we're going to see when, when is all this going to get started? When will this begin? Let's look at the New Testament. Let's go to the New Testament. Matthew 24. Matthew 24. And let's pick it up at verse 29. Matthew 24, verse 29. And let's see when will this begin. Matthew 24, verse 29. Go ahead and read. Immediately after the tribulation of those days mm -hmm. shall the sun be darkened, mm -hmm. and the moon shall not give her light, okay. and the stars shall fall from heaven, mm -hmm. and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Okay, go ahead. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, mm -hmm. and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Mm -hmm. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven mm -hmm. with power and great glory. With power and great glory. Now let's learn something on our way to learn something. That doesn't sound like or look like a secret to me. Now I know a lot there's a doctrine out there was a secret rapture and snatching people off the earth. But let me just say this. When you understand God's holy plan, when you understand his ceremonial laws and you look at them and you observe them, there's no room for a secret rapture. There's no room there because it's outside of how God operates. He does not need to operate in secret. He doesn't need that. He's telling you exactly what he's going to do. And it will come to pass. As the Bible would say, it shall come to pass. Now let's look at verse 31. Go ahead. 
And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. You see, those who observe God's holy day, we know when you observe the Feast of Trumpets, we know this, this is not strange to us. And we know this is not just um, some poetic language. We know the writer at this point meant something. The writer understood what was going on. He's going to come with the sound of a great trumpet. Now, I know this is when the disciple was talking to Christ and he was telling them exactly, you know, when they say, tell us the sign of, the, uh, of your coming uh, in the end of the age. And he's answering that question. Okay? But we know he's not using flowery language. He's just telling you like it is. This is how it's going to happen. This is when it's going to happen. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. Okay? Go ahead. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds. That means all over the world. Four winds. Go ahead. From one end of heaven to mm -hmm. the other. Okay, now let's go to Isaiah 27. Now what that simply means, from the four winds, it just means north, south, east, west. That's what it means. All over the world. North, south, east, west. Where Israel is scattered unto this day. Because the Bible says that they will not be a nation again until Christ comes. Now, I know some of you think in 1948 Israel came back as a nation. No. Okay? No. That's a false sign. And I can explain that in another lesson. Okay? But the Bible says they won't be gathered together again until Christ comes. And that is to the, to the uh, end of the Gentile dynasty. And to the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Okay? Isaiah 27. Let's go to Isaiah 27. He's talking about gathering his people from the four winds, basically from all over the world. He will get personally, he will gather them. He's going to send his angels and he'll be here. Okay, let's go to Isaiah 27 and 12. Let's, let's, let's look at this a little bit. Isaiah 27 and pick it up in verse 12. Go ahead and read. And it shall come to pass in that day. Mm-hmm. That the Lord shall beat off from the channel of the river mm -hmm. unto the stream of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And ye shall be gathered one by one. Who? Gather who one by one? O ye children of Israel. Okay, so he's going to gather his people. Go ahead, verse 13. And it shall come to pass in that day. In that day, go ahead. That the great trumpet shall be blown. There's another trumpet. Go ahead. And they shall come which were ready to perish in the land of Assyria. Mm -hmm. And the outcasts in the land of Egypt. Go ahead and do what? And shall worship the Lord in the holy mount at Jerusalem. That's what's going to happen, brothers and sisters. When he comes and set up shop, these are some things that has to happen. It has to happen. Now, some of you guys are going to say, well, you know, how, I mean, how are we going to, how's that going to happen? How is he going to gather us? Well, the New Testament answer that. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 4. And we'll let the New Testament answer that. How will we be gathered? How, how is this going to happen? So let's look at 1 Thessalonians 4 and pick it up at verse 14. Verse 14 through 17, let the Bible speak. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, mm -hmm. even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. He will bring with them. It says he and all his saints. And we're going to see exactly how that's going to happen. Go ahead, sleep in Jesus will God bring with them. 15. For this we say unto you, mm -hmm. by the word of the Lord, mm -hmm. that we which are alive and remain mm -hmm. until the coming of the Lord mm -hmm. shall not prevent them which are asleep. We will not go before them who are already dead who are in the dust of the earth. 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. In secret. With a shout. Go ahead. With the voice of the archangel. Mm -hmm. And with the trump of God. There's another trump. So he's already telling you what his plan is. That's why when you observe these holy days, that's why we don't, anyone who observes it and has an understanding, there is no room for a secret. There's no room, that's just not how he operates. This is according to his plan. And I don't dictate how he operates. He tells us how he operates in his Bible. In his word, he lets us know exactly how he operates. So we don't have to guess, we don't have to wonder, we don't have to speculate. We can just simply read what the word says and just believe it just the way it is. And say, you know what, he says he's going to, uh, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Let's just believe that. With the voice of an archangel, let's just believe that. And with the trump of God, and then what? And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Go ahead. 
then we which are alive and remain mm -hmm. shall be caught up together with them mm -hmm. in the clouds. See, they think right there, that's the rapture. That is not the rapture. That's just where you're going to meet him. He's going to come down to a certain spot, and he's going to raise those in the dirt up to a certain spot, and those that are alive and remain will meet them where? In the clouds, right there. He didn't say go on off to heaven. He didn't say that. Okay, meet them in the crowds, okay? Uh, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. I'm sorry, go ahead. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Okay, so let's see where he's going to be. Let's see where he's going to be because we're talking about a gathering. That's what we're talking about, this resurrection, because we're talking about him gathering. Now that, that That's what the Feast of Tabernacles is. The Feast of Tabernacles is the in gathering. It's about the gathering. Okay, this is the actual gathering. I know we're talking about trumpets, it's just that... Certain events will be unfolding at each trump, at each trump, at, at the seven seals actually. And then at each trump, certain events will be unfolding. And at the culmination of the seventh trumpet, then there will be a gathering. It's all connected. It's all connected. That's what we're talking about here. But let's go to Zechariah, Zechariah 14. Let's see where we're going to be because we're going to meet him in the clouds. And then we will be with him forever. Now the average Sunday teacher, preacher, is going to tell you, yeah, we're going to be with him, we're going to be in heaven. The Bible doesn't say anything about that. It doesn't say that. So what you need to do is you ask your Sunday preacher, you ask him, where does it say I'm going to heaven with God? Where does it say we're going to go to heaven and we're going to dwell with him in heaven and float around on clouds all day? Where does it say that besides the song saying we're going to walk around heaven all day? Where does it say it in the Bible? Explicitly. But I can show you exactly where it says the Lord's feet will stand and where he will rule. I can tell you that, but I'd rather read it to you. Let's look at Zechariah 14 and 1. Zechariah 14 and 1. Let the Bible speak. Zechariah 14 and 1, 1 through 9 to be exact. Go ahead and read. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, uh -huh. and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. Mm -hmm. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. Okay, now this is going to be the big war of Armageddon, but go ahead. And the city shall be taken, mm -hmm. and the houses rifled, go ahead. and the women ravished. Go ahead. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity, go ahead. and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Okay, verse 3. Verse 3. Then shall the Lord go forth uh -huh. and fight against those nations. And the Lord will fight against those nations. This is the same Jesus. Okay, I know you're probably picturing Jesus helpless on the cross, bleeding, and up. No, 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 no. That's done. Okay, we're talking about another part of his plan. Okay, and then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations, and what? As when he fought in the day of battle. Go ahead. And his feet shall stand in that day. Uh huh. Where? Upon the Mount of Olives. Upon the Mount of, Mount of Olives. I think it's in Jew Jerusalem. I'm not sure, but I'll let the Bible tell me where that is exactly. Go ahead. Which is before Jerusalem mm -hmm. on the east. Okay, go ahead. Now I know. Go ahead. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof. Okay, go ahead. Toward the east mm -hmm. and toward the west. Mm hmm. And there shall be a very great valley. Yeah, because when he split it, it's exactly what it's going to make. A mountain will split. The Mount of Olives will split. But he's preparing the day of battle. He's preparing the way of battle. But go ahead. There shall be a very great valley. And half of the mountain shall remove toward the north. Uh -huh. And half of it toward the south. Okay, verse 5. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains. Mm -hmm. For the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azal. Uh-huh. Yea, ye shall flee, mm -hmm. like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Okay, Uzziah, king of Judah. And what else? And the Lord my God shall come. And what else? And all the saints with thee. And all the saints with thee. The ones we just read where he gathered them. Where did he get them from? He got them, those that sleep in the dust of the earth. He gathered those that sleep in the dust of the earth, and he gathered those saints, and he's bringing them with them. He's bringing them to the spot where he's going to sit, where he's going to stand on the Mount of Olives. That's what, that's what he did. He, he pulled, you know where he got his saints from? He pulled them out of the dust of the earth. Read Daniels. He pulled them out of the dust of the earth. 
and he pulled those who were, were not dead right off the right where they stood, and they met him in the air. And he was on his way to Jerusalem to stand on the Mount of Olives. That's where he got his saints from. And all the saints with them. Now the now the angels that came from heaven with them, because they're there now. Yeah, the angels came with them, but the saints he pulled them right out of the earth. Either under the earth or on top of the earth, but that's where he got them from. Verse 6, go ahead. And it shall come to pass in that day mm -hmm. that the light shall not be clear, mm -hmm. nor dark. Okay, that's going to be a very unusual day, but go ahead, verse 7. But it shall be one day mm -hmm. which shall be known to the Lord, mm -hmm. not day nor night. I cannot even imagine. Go ahead. But it shall come to pass mm -hmm. that at evening time mm -hmm. it shall be light. There it is. At night time there should be light, but go ahead. And it shall be in that day uh -huh. that living water shall go out from Jerusalem. There it is. Go ahead. Half of them toward the former sea mm -hmm. and half of them toward the hinder sea. Okay, go ahead. In summer and in winter shall it be. So this is just how it's going to be. This, this, this declares the Lord. Verse 9. Go ahead. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. No, no. He's going to be king over all heaven. No, no. Read that again. You probably misread that. Read that again. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. Okay, still. We're still not in heaven, folks. I'm not trying to take heaven away from you. You never had it. You and I never had it. All we had to do is read the Bible. All we have to do is read the Bible and let it say what it's going to say. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. That's what your Bible says. Go ahead. In that day mm -hmm. shall there be one Lord uh -huh. and his name one. And his name one. So guess what? We'll all be calling him by his one name. And I say that because we have many different languages out there. The Bible is translated in most languages. There are a few languages out there that it's not translated. But for the most part, the Bible is the number one selling book of all time. And it isn't translated in almost every language. So we say his name a little bit different in different languages. But guess what? When he comes back, that is not going to be a problem. There will be one Lord, because there will be no more false gods, no more idols. Because in that day, when he comes to judge and make war, when people pray to their other gods, those other gods won't answer, won't be around. So if you want to walk contrary to the Lord, then that's your decision. It's totally up to you. But there will be no one and nothing there to save you. There's only one saving sacrifice, which was Jesus himself. His blood and his atonement. That's the only thing that can save you. So if you don't have that, you don't have salvation. Plain and simple. Let's go to Revelation 15. Let's look at the end of the book over here. Because we do it line by line and precept upon precept. We do it here a little and there a little. Let's go to Revelation 15 and pick it up at verse 1. Revelation 15 and verse 1. Let's see here. Revelation 15, verse 1. Go ahead and read. And I saw another sign in heaven, mm -hmm. great and marvelous. Mm -hmm. Seven angels having the seven last plagues. Go ahead. For in them mm -hmm. is filled up the wrath of God. This is the wrath of God. Now I won't go deep into it, but I'll just say, you know, who we're saved from the wrath to come. You just read that is the wrath. Okay? I won't get into it right now, but this is the, the seven last plagues. That's the wrath that you are not appointed to. Okay? That by this time, your body has been changed. You are immortal. So you will not suffer this particular wrath. But let's keep going to verse 2. Go ahead. And I saw, as it were, mm -hmm. a sea of glass mingled with fire. Mm -hmm. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast, mm -hmm. and over his image, mm -hmm. and over his mark. And that they just did not take the mark of the beast. They did not worship him. They did not go with the status quo of the earth. Go ahead. And over the number of his name, mm -hmm. stand on the sea of glass, mm -hmm. having the harps of God. Go ahead, verse 3. And they sing the song of Moses, mm -hmm. the servant of God. Oh yeah, they, they're going to sing the song of Moses like they did back, back in that day in Moses' time. And in songs. But go ahead. And the song of the Lamb. Saying what? 
great and marvelous are thy works, mm -hmm. Lord God Almighty. Mm -hmm. Just and true are thy ways, mm -hmm. thou King of saints. Thou King of saints. King of saints. And he's going to bring his saints with him when he raises them up. His elect. His saints. Okay? Same thing. King of saints. And he's the king of saints because he will be a king ruling right here on earth. Thus says the Lord. Verse 4. Go ahead. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, mm -hmm. and glorify thy name? Mm -hmm. For thou only mm -hmm. art holy. That's right. Go ahead. For all nations shall come and worship before thee. Really? Wait, 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 wait. All nations shall come and worship before thee. All sounds like an absolute. So everyone's going to have to give it this program. Okay? And we're talking about this in gathering. This is people gathering together to come and worship the Lord. You have to do this. This is the new program. You have to do this. For all nations shall come and worship before me. They worship before the Lord. Go ahead. Why? For thy judgments are mm -hmm. made manifest. Because it's going to be evident. It's going to be evident. God says this is how it's going to be done and that's it. And most people will realize it's fair. He's being, he's right. He is the right. He's sovereign. He's right. His judgments are fair and just. What he says goes. And we're going to look at this. Everyone. It says, it says right here, For all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. Now, we were reading this in Revelations. Let's go to Zechariah 14. And we're going to take a look at that. Everyone has to come. We have to look and worship before thee. Zechariah 14 and 11. Zechariah 14 and 11. Go ahead. Let's look at this. And men shall dwell in it. Uh huh. And there shall be no more utter destruction. So war is going to be over with. Go ahead. But Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. That's where he's setting up his kingdom in Jerusalem. But go ahead, verse 13. Let's look at this. And this shall be the place wherewith the Lord will smite mm -hmm. all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Okay, all those who came up and wanted to make war. Go ahead. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. Okay, yeah, that's just, it's not going to end well for them, but go ahead. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes. Uh-huh, what else? And their tongues shall consume away in their mouth. Bad news. It's an ugly picture for those who come against God and His people in that day. Verse 13. And it shall come to pass in that day. Mm -hmm. That a great tumult mm -hmm. from the Lord shall be among them. Go ahead. And they shall lay hold every one mm -hmm. on the hand of his neighbor. Mm -hmm. And his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. And there it is. So there will be fighting back and forth. There will be plenty of people fighting back and forth. Verse 14. And Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem. So many people who know they are Israel, the Judah, just another, one of the tribes, it was also known as Israel, one of the tribes of Israel, Judah, they shall fight at Jerusalem. Go ahead, what happens? And the wealth of all the heathen round about mm -hmm. shall be gathered together. All the wealth, of the, the wealth of the heathen, which means other nations, okay, other than those who are Israel or Israelites, all the other nations who are not Israel or not Judah, um, and the wealth of the heathen, that's all heathen means, round about shall be gathered together. Go ahead. Gold and silver mm -hmm. and apparel mm -hmm. in great abundance. Oh, that's what's going to happen. All right, 15. And so shall be the plague of the horse. Okay, go ahead. Of the mule, mm -hmm. of the camel, mm -hmm. and of the ass. Go ahead. And of all the beasts that shall be in these tents mm -hmm. as this plague. Okay, so a lot of things are going to fail. You know, transportation, all these things that you're counting on in that day are going to fail you when you come against the Lord. Okay? There'll be plague. So if your vehicles and all this stuff doesn't work, you know, sorry for you. When you come against the Lord, that's just how it is. None of this will work. Verse 16. And it shall come to pass mm -hmm. that everyone that is left mm -hmm. of all the nations which came against Jerusalem. Everyone that is left, that means, okay, here's your opportunity. Okay, this great war has just happened. Here's your opportunity. You see everybody else. I'm talking about the people who come against God and Jerusalem. You see everyone else dying and nothing they're doing work. 
Here's your chance and your last chance. You need to do this. What is it that they need to do? And it shall come to pass that everyone left, that is left, of all the nations which came against Jerusalem, shall what? Shall even go up from year to year uh -huh. to worship the king. To worship the king, uh-huh. The Lord of hosts. Uh-huh, and to do what? And to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So, if in the, this hasn't happened yet, even though we're reading it in Zechariah. This hasn't happened yet. And yet, he says, keep this, this is my feast forever. This is my feast forever. And this is Jesus coming back and saying all the things that we need to do. And he said, you know what? Those who are left, of those who are left, that means a lot of them died. Those who are left, here's your chance. You're going you're gonna to come up every year and you're going to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. You're going to worship the King. Jesus is the King, the Lord of hosts. That's your chance. Now, this is the flesh and blood that will be dwelling in the kingdom. Now, don't get me wrong. I know Paul said, you shall not, uh, flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom. He's right. That flesh and blood inherit, they're not going to keep it because they have a chance to get it right. And these, when, 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 when he said, I will make you kings and priests, these are the people who you will be kings and priests over. Those people who were confused and they didn't understand. And now you're going to say, hey, you know what? You need to come back right here every year and keep the Feast of Tabernacles. The same tabernacles that you were keeping in your flesh body. So you're going to teach these people, hey, you need to do this. This, this is how it is. You need to come up here, keep this feast, worship before the king. That's Jesus right here on the throne. You need to get with this. So my question is, why wouldn't you try to do this right now to get an understanding right now? If it's important, according to your definition, if it's okay on the Old Testament, that's for them in the Old Testament, and now we're reading, it's in the Old Testament, but we're talking about something in the future since Jesus is not over there right now. If they're going to do it again, at that time, why aren't you getting an understanding of what the Feast of Tabernacles, tabernacles in, general, in, in particular, and the other Feast of the Lords in general? Why are you not getting a, a, an understanding of that? To even understand what they mean. To understand what, how the Lord operates. According to the Lord, this is what's going to happen. Let's continue here. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. 17. And it shall be mm -hmm. that whoso mm -hmm. will not mm -hmm. come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, up, what? the Lord of hosts, okay, go ahead. even upon them shall be no rain. That means you're not going to eat. At all. Not, oh, well, you need to come to the feast to eat. No, if you don't come, you won't eat where you are. That's what that means. That's what no rain means. And guess what? When the Lord comes, there's no punch in a nine to five clock. No paycheck is coming. That's how serious this is. There's no paycheck coming. Okay? There's no Fortune 500 companies around at this time. Nothing is more important than this. Okay? That's what I want you brothers and sisters to understand. Verse 18. Go ahead. And if the family of Egypt go not up mm -hmm. and come not, mm -hmm. that have no rain, Go ahead. that shall be the plague. Mm -hmm. Wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up no harm. to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Sounds like you have to do it. That need no interpretation. You have no choice. You will get smitten with plagues. You will not eat. These are flesh and blood people. Otherwise, no rain would not matter. No eating and all that, that would not matter. This matters. We're not worried about their mortals. They're not going to sin. They're not going to disobey. Okay? These are also the same type of people that at the end of the Lord's millennial reign, these are the same people who will be influenced by the devil himself after he's loosed out of his prison who, because they still have a choice. 
when they're in that flesh and blood body, they still have a choice. They can go God's way or they can go contrary and suffer the consequences. That is what this is about, brothers and sisters. He's in the gathering. He's still separating the wheat from the tares. Go with me to Leviticus 25. Go with me to Leviticus 25. Leviticus 25, verse 10. We're going to read one verse. Leviticus 25, verse 10. Because when he comes, everything is going to be set straight. Leviticus 25, verse 10. Go ahead. And ye shall hallow the 50th year uh -huh. and proclaim liberty uh -huh. throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. This is freedom and liberty. This is like releasing someone from debt. But this is bigger. This is everything. All the troubles and cares of this world. This is what this liberty means. Go ahead. It shall be a jubile unto you. Uh huh. And ye shall return every man unto his possession. That's right. Go ahead. And ye shall return every man unto his family. Okay. Everyone will be put in where they're supposed to be. In their own land. According to their own tribe. And their own people. Just so you know who you are. And you know your place. Even the Gentile. Whomever you learn the truth and become spiritual Israel, that's how you get in. And that's the tribe you will sit under. That is one of the gates you will walk through of the twelve gates. Whomever you learn the truth from. If you learn it from Levi, you're walking through that gate. If you learn it from Benjamin, you're walking through that gate. And so on and so forth. This is the end gathering. This is what we're talking about here. Let's back up a couple of chapters, which is Leviticus. Let's go to Leviticus 23. Pick it up in verse 39. Leviticus 23 and verse 39. Go ahead and read. Also in the 15th day of mm -hmm. the seventh month, go ahead. when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, go ahead. ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. Seven days. That's what we're talking about right here. Go ahead. On the first day shall be a Sabbath. That's what we're talking about. Go ahead. And on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. Now the eighth day is something different. Now that's going to be our next, next lesson. So I won't focus on the eighth day right now. But I'm showing you that it is tied together. The eighth day is tied to this one, but it is something different. It, is, it has a separate meaning. It has a definite separate meaning. Go ahead, verse 40. And, and you shall take you on the first day mm -hmm. the boughs of goodly trees, uh -huh. branches of palm trees, mm -hmm. and the boughs of thick trees, mm -hmm. and willows of the brook. Okay, go ahead. And you shall rejoice before the Lord your God mm -hmm. seven days. Rejoice. Now, in today's tongue, we say we might say party. We'll say party, but that's what it is. You're supposed to be eating and being merry and talking about the Lord and His goodness and, 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 and exhorting one another and admonishing one another and strengthening one another at this time. That's what, that's what we're supposed to be doing during these feasts. Understanding one another, talking about the law, talking about the Lord, understanding His law, statutes, and commandments. Celebrating His goodness. Celebrating the fact that you are a part of His plan. Rejoicing in that. That's what this is supposed to be about. Let's look at this over at Nehemiah 8. Nehemiah 8. Because for a little while, uh, the Israelites, they, they kind of lost their way. They didn't do it for a little while. And then they had to come back to this, to have that understanding of the Lord. Nehemiah 8, let's pick it up at verse 14. Nehemiah 8 and 14. Nehemiah 8, 14 through 18, let the Bible speak. Go ahead. And they found written in the law, mm -hmm. which the Lord had commanded by Moses. Go ahead. That the children of Israel should dwell in booths mm -hmm. in the feast of the seventh month. Okay, this is the feast that we're talking about. The feast of tabernacles is where they had to dwell in booths. Go ahead. And that they should publish and proclaim in all their cities. Tell everybody. Go ahead. And in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. 
saying, Go forth unto the mount, mm -hmm. and fetch olive branches, what else? and pine branches, mm -hmm. and myrtle branches, mm -hmm. and palm branches, Go ahead. and branches of thick trees, to do what? To make booths, mm -hmm. as it is written. Okay, so they had to do that because they were traveling from their own land. Okay, from wherever it, wherever it was, they traveled from their own land to come and keep the Feast of Tabernacles because that symbolizes the ingathering of the people coming from all over the place, coming over to Jerusalem, and they made themselves some tw temporary dwellings. That's why they had to make booths over there. So when they came from all over the world, that's what they had to do. That was their temporary dwelling because they stayed there for the seven days for the feast. They partied, they rejoiced seven days. That's what this is about. It symbolizes the ingathering. Them coming together unto the Lord as it is written. 16. So the people went forth mm -hmm. and brought them mm -hmm. and made themselves booths. Just like as it was written. Go ahead. Everyone upon the roof of his house. Okay. And in their courts. Everywhere. Go ahead. And in the courts of the house of God. They're, they set these booths up everywhere. They asked the guy, hey man, can I put my booth up? And they knew what it was about. They knew what it was about. It's the same today would be if someone, um, they, had a, they had their home and you asked if you can uh, put your camper in their driveway so you can keep the feast. Something, something like that. If you want to keep their, your camper in their driveway so you can kind of be there with everybody else celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles. It's something like that. Go ahead. And in the street of the water gate. Everywhere. Go ahead. And in the street of the gate of Ephraim. Okay, 17. And all the congregation of them mm -hmm. that were come again mm -hmm. out of the captivity made booths. Go ahead. And sat under the booths. Okay. For since the days of Yeshua. Okay, and they're talking about Joshua, but go ahead. We're talking about translation. Go ahead. The son of Nun, mm -hmm. unto that day, mm -hmm. had not the children of Israel done so. See, they, they lost their way for a little while. They, they knew, they knew, but they just did, they did not do it for a while because they lost their way. Because as we, as we um, read, because they were in captivity, we're talking about Nehemiah, and they found written in the law which the Lord had commanded Moses. So that's how they found it. They said, you know what? Wow, guys, we, we, we figured it out. We need to do this. We need to observe this holy, it's written in God's law. And guess what? Now you're finding out. Go ahead. And there was very great gladness. Okay, and they were happy about it. 18. Also, day by day, mm -hmm. from the first day until the last day, uh -huh. he read in the book of the law of God. Mm -hmm. And they kept the feast seven days. Go ahead. And on the eighth day was a solemn assembly. Go ahead. According unto the manner. According unto the manner. According unto the manner. Okay, we're going to look at a few more things, then we'll close it out. We'll look at a few more things. Turn with me to, we are running out of time here, so we're going to have to go to a few things here. Let's turn with me, we'll talk about our earthly tabernacle, which is our body. And let's look at 2 Corinthians 5. Come with me to 2 Corinthians 5. Pick it up at verse 1. 2 Corinthians 5 right now. We're talking about our earthly tabernacle. That's this body, because that's got to change too when we do come into the, uh, the uh, Feast of Tabernacles when the Lord comes. Go ahead, verse 5. Chapter 5, verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle mm -hmm. were dissolved, mm -hmm. We have a building of God. Go ahead. A house not made with hands, mm -hmm. eternal in the heavens. Mm -hmm. For in this we groan, mm -hmm. earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. Go ahead. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. Go ahead, verse 4. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, mm -hmm. being burdened. Mm -hmm. Not for that we would be unclothed. Okay but clothed upon, mm -hmm. that mortality might be swallowed up of life. It might be swallowed up of life. Now, some people are going to say, well, you know, how is that? Well, we talked about the resurrection before. We know about that, but we're going to read a little bit right now. 
A little bit right now. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. We're going to touch on it a little bit because a lot of people, they have people running around in heaven and then they can't understand the whole resurrection. That's because they got the whole plan wrong. You're going to have to get rid of all that tradition and all that stuff you've been taught and just read only the Bible, casting out the tradition and the story and the fables that you've been taught. 1 Corinthians 15, pick it up, verse 35. Let's go. But some men will say, mm -hmm. How are the dead raised up? I've heard that before. Go ahead. And with what body do they come? Mm -hmm. Thou fool. Thou fool. That which thou sowest is not quickened, mm -hmm. except it dies. That's right. This earthly body is not quickened. I mean, it's alive, but it's not immortal. It dies. Go ahead. And that which thou sowest, mm -hmm. thou sowest not that body that shall be. Mm -hmm. But bare grain, Go ahead. it may chance of wheat, mm -hmm. or of some other grain. Go ahead. But God giveth it a body as it has pleased him. Go ahead. And to every seed his own body. Go ahead. All flesh is not the same flesh. All flesh is not the same flesh. Go ahead. But there is one kind of flesh of men, mm -hmm. another flesh of beasts, mm -hmm. another of fishes, mm -hmm. and another of birds. Okay, now let's deal with ours. Verse 40. There are also celestial bodies mm -hmm. and bodies terrestrial. All right, that's like angels and then terrestrial. That's like us. Go ahead. But the glory of the celestial is mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. and the glory of the terrestrial is another. They're saying it's, he's saying it's two different things. Go ahead. There is one glory of the sun, mm -hmm. and another glory of the moon. Two different things. Go ahead. And another glory of the stars. Mm -hmm. For one star differs from another star in glory. Okay, go ahead. So also is the resurrection of the dead. Uh-huh. It is sown in corruption. Go ahead. It is raised in incorruption. Mm -hmm. It is sown in dishonor. Mm -hmm. It is raised in glory. Go ahead. It is sown in weakness. Mm -hmm. It is raised in power. Okay, go ahead. It is sown a natural body. Okay. It is raised a spiritual body. Go ahead. There is a natural body mm -hmm. and there is a spiritual body. See, he just made it plain and simple, brothers and sisters. He explained it as two different things. Let's jump down to verse 47. Verse 47, let, let him explain a little bit more. Go ahead. The first man is of the earth. Go ahead. Earthy. Mm -hmm. The second man is the Lord from heaven. There you go. Go ahead. As is the earthy, mm -hmm. such are they also that mm -hmm. are earthy. Mm -hmm. And as is the heavenly, mm -hmm. so, such are they also that are heavenly. Go ahead. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, mm -hmm. we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. There you go, brothers and sisters. Now, you're going to turn, turn with me to Leviticus 23 one more time. And we're going to finish this thing out. Now, that's now later on, you, can, you continue on. You jump down to verse 51 and keep on reading all the way to 54. And he's going to show you this great mystery. And that mystery is the resurrection. This is what we're talking about. He's talking about we're going to sow, sow this natural flesh body into death, into the grave, or die. And then it's going to be raised up by the power of Christ, be raised up a spiritual body. That's how, for some people say, well, how the dead raised? He just answered that question boldly and clearly and succinctly, I might add. Leviticus 23 and verse 41. Leviticus 23 and 41. Go ahead and read. And you shall keep it a feast unto the Lord mm -hmm. seven days in the year. Mm -hmm. It shall be a statute forever in your generation. Mm -hmm. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. In the seventh month, going down to verse 42, next verse. You shall dwell in booths seven days. Go ahead. All that are Israelites born uh -huh. shall dwell in booths. There you go, verse 43. That your generations may know mm -hmm. that I made the children of Israel to mm -hmm. dwell in booths. Go ahead. When I brought them out of the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. Now, let's look, we're going to look at the, the end of this, but I want to read Leviticus 23 and 3 one more time. I want to take a look at this so, people, so we can understand the significance of all this. It has seven festivals, seven high days, annual ones, annual. Seven is completion. Now go ahead and read Leviticus 23 and 3. Six days shall work be done. Uh -huh. 
But the seventh day is a Sabbath of rest. Uh -huh. Go ahead. A holy convocation. Mm -hmm. You shall do no work therein. Mm -hmm. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwelling. It, no matter where you are, whether you are in Jerusalem or not, you are to keep the Sabbath. And when you look at the top of Leviticus 23, the first Sabbath he talks about is his weekly Sabbath. We call it Saturday. His weekly Sabbath kicks off all the other holy days. And the reason he puts that there is because it's still important to the Lord. And seven is completion. This is all flesh has. This is all the time flesh has to do what it's going to do. You know, they, 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 they look at Adam. Even in the footnotes of some of your Bible, even in secular science, they have Adam at about 4,000, give or take, before the common era. They have him about 4,000 B.C. And now we're after that. We are 2,000, a little over 2,000, in your Domini, A.D. Okay, so it's about 6,000 years past the fact. Seven is it. We're coming up on the 6,000. Then we know there's a millennial reign, which is another thousand. Now go look at Second Peter, and it says that to the Lord, one day is as a thousand, and a thousand is one day. Okay, so that's how we get that. That's how this works. And so this is the Feast of Tabernacles, which will be the last one. And then we're going to go into the next lesson, which will be the last great day, which means something else totally different. And I'll tell you right now, it means eternity. He's doing a new thing. At this time, there will be no more flesh and blood. Now, let's see how we're supposed to keep this feast real quick, and we'll wrap it up. Go to me. Go with me to Deuteronomy 14, and we'll pick it up in verse 22. Because I know a lot of people, you may be, this may be something completely new to you, something foreign, something alien. And you may say, well, Neil, how do we keep this feast? We're going to show you right now. Deuteronomy 14 and verse 22. Go ahead. Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed, uh -huh. and the field bringeth forth year by year. Okay, go ahead. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God. Okay, so we know the feast really does mean eating. Go ahead. In the place which he shall choose mm -hmm. to place his name there. Okay, and he said, where two or more gather together, I'm among them, so you don't have to worry about that. Go ahead. The tithe of thy corn. Mm -hmm of thy wine, mm -hmm. and of thine oil, mm -hmm. and the firstlings of thy herds and of thy flocks, mm -hmm. that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. Okay, go ahead, 24. And if the way be too long for thee, mm -hmm. so that thou art not able to carry it, okay. or if the place be too far from thee, mm -hmm. which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there, okay. when the Lord thy God has blessed thee, what does he want you to do? Then shall thou turn it into money. Okay, turn it into money and do what? And bind up the money in thine hand. Mm -hmm. And shall go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. Okay. And thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusteth after. Whatever you lusted after. Of course you cannot sin. But whatever you lusted after. You want some bonbons? You want some cheesecake? You want... <laughs> you know, you want ribeyes every day, all day? That's totally fine. Go ahead. For oxen, mm -hmm. or for sheep, mm -hmm. or for wine. That is real wine. Go ahead. And if you don't think that's wine, then what, is, what else he said? Or for strong drink. Uh, that's, that's Jack Daniels. That's vodka. That's whatever. Okay. Now, I know a lot of you are <gasps> gasping. You're covering your mouth. <gasps> Alcohol. Is it? No, it's not. Okay. The Lord did not just promote sin. Being drunk, being a drunkard. Falling all over the place. Getting to the point so drunk to where you are going to sin or you're going to be belligerent. That's the sin. Having a drink is not a sin. Being drunk and sinning, that's the problem. This is not Robert talking. He said, and thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusted after, for oxen, or for sheep, or for wine, or for strong drink. Go ahead. Or for whatsoever thy soul desires. Go ahead. And thou shalt eat there mm -hmm. before the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt rejoice. You who? Thou and, who else? and thine household. Everybody rejoice. So this is the Feast of Tabernacles. The Feast of Ingathering. 
one of the Lord's seven holy days. I hope you got some understanding in Jesus' name. Until next time, this is the Fountain of Israel Bible Studies Program. Join us next time.